All right, uh, welcome to another uh, getting to know the speaker at NGConf. We have with us Dan Walling. Dan, how you doing? I'm doing great, Joe. Anytime I'm talking to Joe Eames, I'm doing great. So, you know. Good, good to hear. Um, all right, so we're going to do a bunch of uh, Q&A with Dan. Um, this is going to be really fun. First question, Dan, how do you pronounce your last name? <laughs> That depends on who you talk to, Joe, because I've been to Sweden and apparently even I say it wrong. So oh, really, uh, yeah, over there, it's like Don, what do they say? Don Valin, I think is how you say it. <laughs> Don Valin, which huh. just sounds totally different. Uh, yeah, you think of a wall leaning and you got it, Dan Walleen. So. Is that, is that, is, I'm assuming it's super common people pronounce it because it, it, you want to read the, your last name differently, right? I know I oh, always yeah. thought it was something. Uh, when I knew about you before I knew you, I thought it was something else until I was like, wait. No, everybody says Waylon, Wallen. I've even heard other variations. And now I'm just like, yeah, that's me. You know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I gave up on trying. Awesome. All right. So tell us really briefly, how did you get into programming? Uh, kind of an interesting story there. Uh, so I did take, gosh, what was it? It would have been a basic class my freshman year in high school. You know, the mm -hmm. TRS 80s. We used to call them trash 80s which uh, sadly Joe probably knows about this and we're dating ourselves by saying uh -huh. this, but, um, but I didn't really do much aside from that. So my, uh, so I did kind of biochemistry slash economics because I was going to go to med school. That was mm -hmm. my plan. But my junior year, um, and I, I probably owe my whole career to this guy, a guy named Jim. He was a neighbor um, in the area I lived at school. And he came knocking one day and he was an engineer, by the way. And he goes, Hey, I'm going down to the engineering lab. They have this thing called, I don't know if he called it the internet, but this thing, you want to come? I'm like, yeah, sure. I'll come with it. He was a cool guy. So I'm like, yeah, I'll come see what, what you got. And they had, uh, you know, it was the engineering lab. So they had pretty decent machines for back then and decent, decent speeds. It wasn't like modem. Mm -hmm. um, and this was early nineties, by the way. Right, so right. long story short, I got, really hooked on you know back then i think it was mosaic was the browser mm -hmm. but you could view source code i don't know if it was mosaic or later but anyway at some point i could view source code which is like you know you view source code and you're like looking around it's like is this legal should i be seeing this <laughs> and uh, the rest is history i got hooked on it i uh, ended up getting a temp temporary job so i thought before i wanted to go to med school and then i ended up getting a full-time one that paid well enough that we went ah, all right i'm just gonna do this <laughs> That's awesome. So that's my story. All right. So um, we might need to keep, you might need to cut this list off at like 20, but uh, what programming languages do you know? Do I know well, or do I know? <laughs> yeah, let's, let's In, say so at least a passing familiarity with. Uh, You've done something well, with, you could build something. The, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Uh, if we go back to the old, I'll, I'll go through the history here. So I started with Perl, which I do not recommend as your first language. Mm -hmm. uh, because regex comes up right away and you go, Oh my gosh, I could never do this. Mm -hmm. um, VB, mm -hmm. the, the older, like VB three through six, uh, mm -hmm. visual basic, which I loved by the way, back then it was great. Um, little C plus plus on a job. Very little though, to be honest, thankfully, uh, C sharp Java, uh, JavaScript TypeScript. Uh, well, the SQL database type stuff. I know that pretty decent. Um, those are the main ones I'd say. So. Awesome. All right. What's the most useless technology that you actually learned? How to use email. <laughs> that is the most useless <laughs> because I hate email. Favorite tech that's really not. And, and again, when tech was like talking like frameworks or languages or something like that, favorite tech that's not really in use anymore. You know, probably uh, I really liked BB3 through six. Yeah. Um, because you could build com components for web, mm -hmm. you know, back then it was called classic ASP. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you did that, you probably did. did a little, little, um, and you could do them in C plus plus or VB. Um, I did them in VB at that time, mm -hmm. but you could also build desktop apps and there was just lots of use cases. And it was one of those, the reason I say this is because it was a few, one of the few tools I can think of in the history of what I've done where it was like super powerful and you only had to learn this one thing, this one right. like IDE in one language and you could do all kinds of stuff. Right. Um, and by the way, I'm going to recant a little on what I said on the notation. Cause I know people are going to go, 
He said, learning algorithms are useless. No, that's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is I don't use them enough to like dwell on it. That's what I meant. Right. So anyway, cool. It Welcome. is useful to learn algorithms, folks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, what's your favorite part about Angular? I would say, I always describe Angular as like a uh, framework that does woodworking. It's mm -hmm. like walking into the ultimate tool shed and every saw you need, sander, you know, Dremel type thing, whatever it is, it's there and ready. So I like the consistency and the patterns. Mm -hmm. um, I do a lot with the others and I'm not going to badmouth the others because I, I do react uh, a lot actually nowadays in my current role. Mm -hmm. And I like it. Re reacts great, but it doesn't have the. Uh, it's like walking into a tool shed and you got a couple saws and you got to pick the rest. Mm -hmm. I like having the consistency, especially on larger teams. I think it's yeah. just awesome to have that. Cool, 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 cool. All right, what do you think is the hardest part of Angular? Toughest part, maybe to learn. Or Probably rock. all the tools in the tool shed. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a blessing and a curse, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I do think for folks that are newer to Angular, especially maybe you're a junior level and just starting out, that it kind of feels a little overwhelming on the concepts. And I know that, you know, they're considering the spec right now on how they're going to maybe make uh, modules optional, for example. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I think for larger apps, modules are really valuable. And most languages, like some of those we talked about, Java and C Sharp, for example, you know, they have ways to organize your code into what I'd call buckets. Mm -hmm. And of course, in Angular, that's like modules. Right. Um, but yeah, I will say that there are a lot of ter uh, terminology and things like that to learn. Yeah, yeah, I agree. All right. What is your favorite ng-conf memory or one of them? Ooh. You know, probably the first one you guys ever did. Um, yeah. I got to convert. I, I still remember. I don't know if it was you or Aaron. It was one of you two, I think, though. And like, hey, Dan, can you convert your AngularJS in 60 minutes to 20? <laughs> and I'm like, we can try. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I think that was the first talk I ever gave, if I remember. I could be wrong, but I think, I think that was it. Yeah. But I just remember walking into, because it was at uh, Little America the first mm -hmm. time, mm -hmm. first couple of times. Mm -hmm. And uh, I still remember it was packed. I mean, like I went into this thinking it was going to be kind of a small, you know, deal and you guys like sold out the room. So I just remember the energy and it, it was just fun. It, mm. It's still one of my favorite ever conferences, by the way. So cool. 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 <laughs> uh, yeah. That talk, uh, the YouTube video is our most popular YouTube video on the channel has the most number of views. <laughs> it's kind of funny, but yeah. That's yeah. Cool. It really is. Okay. Uh, what are you talking, what are you talking on this year? Uh, I think I signed up <laughs> <laughs> for, so I did a talk a couple of years ago on, uh, what's called a fluid framework. It's a, uh, collaboration framework for JavaScript apps. Um, and so they've completely redone. It's an open source library, by the way, they've completely redone the APIs, uh, made them a lot more approachable, I would say. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to be talking about that and how you can add Kind of like if you were to take Google Docs or Word Online or one of those, you know, not like we want to build that because we don't, right. but that type of collaboration could be built into custom apps where you and I are typing in the same text box at the same mm. exact time and it actually works. Huh. So it's much more than just like web sockets. It's, gotcha. there's a lot to it. Oh, sounds really cool. What, what inspired you to speak on that? Well, part of that relates to what I do mm -hmm. <laughs> for sure. my uh, sure. day job, but honestly, it's just a cool, it's something that we've never really had. I mean, we've always had, you know, for a long time anyway, WebSockets. But true collaboration, it turns out, and I'll have to admit, I was totally ignorant about this, you know, about two and a half years, two years ago or so. I didn't know the difference between, oh, well, WebSocket sends messages and then you have collaboration. So long story short, you can do some things now that would have been really hard to do for true collaboration. And with all our remote working people, that's pretty cool. That's cool. Awesome. All right. We're hitting the last section. All right. It's a bunch of These rapid tough, fire. Joe. Yeah, they are. <laughs> I'm going to ask you a series of rapid fire questions. You don't explain your answer. You just, just pick. I'm going to give it. you two options. Pick one of them. Okay. No explanation as to why. Here we go. Okay. There's only a few of these. Kirk or Picard? 
Ooh, Picard. All right. Um, Grogu or BB-8? Grogu, he's got power, man. <laughs> okay. Ruby or Scala? Uh, Ruby. Okay. Sports or esports? Sports. Football or football? Ah, uh, well, yeah. F O O T B A L L, as in NFL, college uh-huh. sports, football. Yes, that, that, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. In Russian, uh, I speak a little Russian. They say that Amerikansky football, right? American football. Amerikansky. Amerikansky. <laughs> <laughs> yep. American football. Cool. All right. Well, thanks again, Dan. It was uh, great to talk to you. Appreciate uh, all you do. And we're looking forward to seeing your talk this year. Yeah. Looking forward to being there. Thanks, Joe. Yep.